What's up guys, Jimmy here with my top 10 PS3 games list for 2012. Got a lot to cover, so let's get started. So honestly guys, I had a real challenge taking the games in my PS3 collection and narrowing it down to 10 games. There are so many great games in my PS3 library and also a lot of PS3 games that I still don't have yet, but to get those games and to narrow it down into top a top 10 PS3 games list was a real challenge. I'm not going to lie. There are a lot of games that are not in this list that I would recommend, you know, in a second. So I'll probably do another video in the near future talking about some of the other PS3 games uh, that I would recommend that you guys check out and play and buy and add to your collection. So, to be honest, this is a, a list, a video that has pretty much been in the process for a couple months. I've been thinking, playing, just pondering what games I should put in this top 10 list and some games I really wanted to have in this list but this just didn't quite make it so look for that next video in the near future um, so let's get started for my top 10 PS3 games list for 2012 so the first game we're going to talk about is a game that came out this year and that is Twisted Metal for the PlayStation 3 so an interesting thing about Twisted Metal is originally the Twisted Metal version for the PS3 was supposed to just be a downloadable title. They're going to maybe have it only be multiplayer. And they got a lot of feedback saying no. I think it was Sony. And uh, Sony approached the developer and they said, you know, no, this needs to be a full retail game. And so they have a campaign in Twisted Metal, and man, Twisted Metal, the campaign and the multiplayer was so much fun. I love the Twisted Metal series, and I'm so glad that there's finally a PS3 edition uh, from the Twisted Metal series. And you play these various levels, these different types, from races to kind of like a destruction derby type sometimes like last man standing uh, you have these different weapons that you collect uh, health packs and the different areas that I got to race in and combat in were just a lot of fun and were very very unique um, I had a blast playing through not only the campaign in Twisted Metal but also the multiplayer as well the multiplayer was extremely extremely fun and actually I think you can pick up Twisted Metal are probably around half price. The game actually came out this year, but some places I think occasionally offer it for around 30 to 40 bucks. Um, and yeah, just a great, great game. Something different. There isn't racing combat games released all the time. There's a lot of racing games released, but games like Twisted Metal, the quality of Twisted Metal, you don't get every day. Definitely check out Twisted Metal for the PlayStation 3. So the next one in my collection or top 10 list is a game it is a sequel and is a follow-up to a game to one of my favorite PlayStation 3 games. And the sequel made the top 10 list, and that is Infamous 2. I did pick up the Hero Edition. Infamous 2 is an extremely fun open-world game with just a great, great campaign. So in Infamous 2, you get to explore this just incredible city you've got these electrical special powers many different special powers from electrical uh, grenades um, you can electrify your enemies explode cars you can soar from building to building just just go up climb these just incredibly huge buildings and it's a lot of fun to play through this huge area with these special powers the campaign is great the visuals are just fantastic. The music is great. Not only can you play through this incredible campaign and have a lot of fun, but there's a lot of side missions that you can check out and play if you choose to do so. Now, 
looking at Infamous 1 and Infamous 2, there are some differences. Um, namely, it is in a different area. Also, the visuals have been, have been improved from the first game. But if someone is to ask me, you know, what is, to you, what is the main difference between Infamous 1 and Infamous 2? What would it be? Well, I'd have to say it would be the user-generated levels or the ability for gamers to create their own missions, create their own levels in Infamous 2. Not only that, if you have a copy of Infamous 2, you can check out all the different levels that other gamers around the world have created, and some of them are really good. You can check out these levels, and the gamers around the world have rated these levels. The ones that have played these levels, they've rated them, they've stacked them up. You can check out which ones are the best of the best. So Infamous 2 is just a great package, a great deal. You have the campaign, you have the side missions, and you have the chance to check out these cool user-generated levels from the Infamous 2 community. Infamous 2 is definitely a game I highly recommend. Okay, so the next one on my list is a first-person shooter that I quickly fell in love with, and I still play the multiplayer to this day, and that is Killzone 3. This is an incredible first-person shooter, and unfortunately, in my opinion, it's just it's totally underrated. People pick this up, but in my opinion, not nearly the amount of people picked it up that should have. Just an incredible campaign. Some of the best visuals um, that you'll ever find on the PS3, you'll find in Killzone 3. Very unique, diverse levels, um, from colorful jungles to just awesome looking um, blizzard filled levels um, that are off, off the ocean. Um, just so much fun to play through. Now, I have been playing the multiplayer. I've been reading on some forums talking about how the multiplayer is dead, not a lot of people are playing it. Well, for me, I didn't have a problem getting into matches with 24 players um, and had a blast. And I played this game recently for days, and that's all I played. When I first got the game, I played it for a couple months, played the multiplayer, played through the campaign, and I also got to play the lion's share of the campaign with split-screen co-op. My brother-in-law came over, we were looking at all my games, we are like, well, what should we play? What would be a good one? And on the back of the game, it says network players, 2 to 24 players, and it also it says one player for, like, the... Uh, it's like, well, I guess there's just one player campaign. That's kind of a bummer. But there wasn't. I was able to play split screen, two players with my brother-in-law. We had a blast playing through most of the campaign. It's just a solid campaign. I'm really hoping that a Killzone 4 gets released um, in the near future. I'm not sure if they're going to wait until a PlayStation 4. But just a phenomenal first-person shooter. You could probably pick it up on the cheap. And yes, people still play it online, and it is a lot of fun playing through the different classes. I mainly play the engineer, um, but just yeah, just a great one. I, I really recommend you picking up Killzone 3. Okay, so the next one was kind of a tough one for me to determine on which one to select. Um, I love Uncharted 2. And a lot of people go back between which one they like more, Uncharted 2 or Uncharted 3. Now, in my opinion, in terms of innovation and just upping the level of improvement from Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2, they really, Naughty Dog really went up and above by leaps and bounds the amount of improvement that they did. Uncharted 1's a great game, but Uncharted 2 is like, bam, that next level. And Uncharted 3 did make my list for the top 10 PS3 picks, Drake's Deception. Uh, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal game. And in certain areas of the game, compared with Uncharted 2, they did make some improvements. Um, not by leaps and bounds when compared with Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 2, but I do feel that Uncharted 3 is the better game. Um, I really like the fact in Uncharted 3 that you got to check out in some nice detail uh, I'm not going to go into it for those of you guys that didn't play it, but you got to check out kind of Drake's background and story, and they tell it in a really unique fashion. Um, the Uncharted games, you really can't go wrong, especially with Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3. Um, of course, you have the campaign and the multiplayer. A lot of people 
you know, it's kind of hit or miss for them, but for me, the multiplayer is a lot of fun. Um, but overall, Uncharted 3, it's a no-brainer. Pick it up if you haven't already. Um, just incredible storytelling. <laughs> and again, just like Killzone 3, unbelievable visuals that you can't find in a whole lot of games that are being released, even today, by today's standard. An incredible soundtrack um, and just crisp, solid gameplay. The gameplay Uncharted is just top-notch. The developers, I mean, the storytelling, yes, is great. The, the graphics are great, yes. But the capstone or the just the thing that makes Uncharted is just the smooth, crisp gameplay. Definitely check that one out. But God of War 3 is my next pick for my top 10 PS3 games. Uh, so now this is a game that when it got announced, so many people were excited because millions of copies were sold on uh, God of War 1, God of War 2 for the PS2. So when this one was announced, people were so excited. And Santa Monica Studios did an unbelievable job with this one. I love getting the different powers and abilities for Kratos and just taking on these gigantic bosses. Some of the boss battles are so epic and so intense. But the cool thing about this game is that sometimes you're just playing some standard enemies and these standard enemies, um, it's funny, these standard enemies that you play and encounter sometimes are more epic than some of the bosses you'll encounter in a lot of games that you can play today. This game still stands up. It'll be interesting to see how God of War Ascension uh, stacks up and how the whole multiplayer works. Well, I'm really interested to see how fun the multiplayer, but regardless, I am looking forward to Ascension um, and to see how good that one is and see how good the uh, campaign does. I'm sure it'll be great. It's done by the same uh, Santa Monica studio, so I'm sure it'll be phenomenal. Uh, but God of War 3, if you don't have it yet, you can pick it up pick it up on the cheap, and it is one epic game. So Valkyria Chronicles is one that unfortunately didn't sell very well, but it's definitely one worth checking out. An incredible storytelling experience. There's a lot of cutscenes, a lot of dialogue, and if that isn't up your alley, you probably would be interested in it. But Valkyria Chronicles is fantastic. It's got RPG elements, strategy elements, and it's kind of almost set in like a World War I, World War II setting. But then it's got things that you'd never see, not even today. Technology that isn't even available today. And you've got your squad. You send your squad out. But before you do so, you can select which squad members you want to select. And each squad member has just a quick bio on them. What they're about, uh, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. You've got your snipers, you've got your medics, um, and all different types um, of, uh, of infantry to choose from. And you go through these levels, taking out the enemy, taking out the tanks of the enemy to gain control. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. When you go and select the different actions for each member, each squad member, you can tr control that member and it's done in a third-person fashion. You go out, you shoot the enemy, or you perhaps throw a grenade or weapon, um, and it's kind of like done in a turn-based format where if you attack your enemy, then the enemy, you won't get to attack anymore, and the enemy will then get to attack you. So if you're encountering a lot of different enemies and you're just by yourself, you might want to rethink that because you'll get taken out very quickly. But like I said, this game is very unique and very special because the storytelling is just done so well. It has a really nice art style, and the soundtrack is actually really good as well. After the battles take place in this game, you'll get to strengthen your squad members, kind of like in a boot camp fashion. Um, and not only that, you'll also get to go and upgrade your weapons and upgrade your tank. Just a solid game. Unfortunately, uh, Valkyria Chronicles 2 and 3 were only released for the PS3. Uh, first, Valkyria Chronicles, of course, is a PlayStation 3 exclusive, but I'm really hoping that the PS3 gets another 
installment in the very near future because it's just a great, great game that I recommend. Okay, so the next one is a game, another game with an epic, really unique story, um, and that is Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. This is a game that, you know, a lot of people wanted to get PS3 just for this game. It's one of my favorite PlayStation 3 games, um, and just an incredible campaign to play through. You'll get to check out different areas in the world, tons of different weapons you'll pick up, and abilities, stealth abilities, and technology that you'll get to use. This is just a top-notch game. Again, it is not for everyone uh, with, uh, with uh, long cutscenes and long stories, but the di dialogue is top-notch. Uh, there's definitely some cheesy moments in the game, um, but yeah, I cannot recommend Metal Gear Solid 4 enough. Uh, it's been out for a while now. You can pick it up for dirt cheap, and it's, it's just great. Okay, so my next game is actually a game that came out this year, and a lot of people overlooked it. Some people thought it was okay, but I love this RPG. I've been playing the Final Fantasy series ever since the Super Nintendo um, with Final Fantasy 2 II and 3 in the U.S. lease. Um, and then also the Final Fantasy games on the PlayStation 1. Um, but my next pick is Final Fantasy XIII 2. Um, a lot of people dismiss this game, and there's also, of course, a lot of controversy in terms of the ending. But this is a solid RPG, and I loved it. It did so many things right. I love the amount of exploration that you can check out. The visuals are incredible. The storyline was fantastic, um, and I loved the soundtrack. Some of the music tracks weren't that good, but... Overall, I, I really, really enjoyed the soundtrack um, and the different members you'll get to meet up that were found in Final Fantasy XIII um, was also done very well. Uh, this is just an epic game. Um, believe it or not, it's still one of my top picks for 2012. A lot of people dismissed it, thought it wasn't very good. Well, for me, guys, it's a fantastic RPG that I just can't recommend enough. Check out Final Fantasy XIII 2 when you get the chance, and I think a demo is still available for it, either for the PS3, for the PS3 and the Xbox 360. Um, the demo is good, but I mean, you could. There's been so many price drops for this game. You might be able to pick it up for around twenty to thirty dollars, depending where you go. Uh, it's a solid title. Okay, um, the next one is a game from a studio, and um, this actually this studio was actually just recently at E3 at the Sony conference, um, and Quantic Dream actually is a great studio, a great developer, and uh, Beyond was recently announced, and that game looks phenomenal. And I think they're also responsible for last generation's Indigo Prophecy. But Heavy Rain is a game that had been in development for quite some time. And you want to talk about a game with not only an incredible storyline, an incredible score, um, and they, they're able to achieve this incredible storyline with just some great, great voice acting. Um, great storyline you get to play through from all these different points of perspective, all these different characters, and depending on the choices that you make in this game will ultimately determine if some of these characters live or die. Uh, very unique, very cool, and the great thing about that is making the different choices is it really lends to replayability. Heavy Rain, you know, it's not a game that has multiplayer. Some games that have multiplayer you can play countless hours for. But instead of multiplayer, what lends itself to replayability is the chance to choose a variety of paths for the story and a variety of endings, which is really awesome. Check out Heavy Rain if you have not. Um, again, this is a game that I believe there is a demo and just a solid, solid title. And the great thing about this one thankfully, is that um, 
not only did it score well with reviewers, it scored well with gamers too. Gamers bought this game, it was a hit at retail. I know, I know a lot of people don't like to talk about sales, but I think it's important to occasionally talk about sales in terms of quality titles that sell well chances are there's going to be a sequel where there's going to be more to come of quality games, which I like to talk about sales if it is about quality titles. So that means that the developers are like, well, I guess the gamers really spoke with their wallets, and so we're going to give them more of that. So Heavy Rain, there's not going to be, I guess, a Heavy Rain 2, but it looks like Beyond is going to be coming out in the near future. And so if you're a fan of Heavy Rain, it looks like um, Beyond is definitely one you're going to want to check out. Okay, so the next one in my top 10 PS3 games list is a game that was actually in my last year's top 10 PS3 games list, and this is one that I've put on so many hours, and this is one that actually did take some thought, mainly because kind of like a follow-up in the series was released, or a sequel, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, I really took some a lot of thought into this one. But my my final pick um, for my top 10 PS3 games list is Battlefield Bad Company 2. Now, I do understand and realize that Battlefield 3 is out. It's got incredible maps. You can go in jets, fly around. Battlefield 3 is a great game. It is an unbelievable game. But for whatever reason, for me, Bad Company 2 is the better game. I... I mean, a lot of you guys will agree with me in terms especially of the campaign. The campaign in Bad Company 2 is way better than, than in uh, Battlefield 3. I do enjoy Battlefield 3. I do. But something about overall, if you look at both of them, the multiplayer I enjoyed more in Bad Company 2 than in Battlefield 3. I don't know why. There are just some things that they changed that I really wish they did not change. Um, now, the, prob the big problem, though, is that EA and DICE, they need to close down some of the servers, mainly because to get into a full match for Bad Company 2, I have had some problems, because there's all these different servers and all these matches going on, because they're mainly focusing, of course, on Battlefield 3. Battlefield 3 is just an unbelievable game. I'm going to spend more time with it, but for me right now, um, Bad Company 2 is my favorite Battlefield game right now. Battlefield 3, I will put more time on it, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens and what takes place for next year. I just enjoy playing the multiplayer more in Bad, Bad Company 2 than I do in Battlefield 3. That's just me. Definitely let me know your thoughts on which game you like more, Bad Company 2 or Battlefield 3. Uh, if there were full matches and you compared the two, which one would be the, the better game? But anyway, guys, there is my top 10 PS3 games list for 2012. Make sure to include a comment or video response. Definitely respond by video, and I'll have it where if you do post a video response, it'll be approved automatically. Also, leave a comment. What's your top 5 or top 10 PS3 games list in your collection? Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you later.